It's extraordinary. And another opponent to Whoa. lose. What a head kick. To get it. It's all over. A spectacular finish. Just like that. That's a bang. Done. What's up, everyone? We're back with another episode of The Fight Corner, episode number seven. This week, taking a look back at UFC 301 Pantoja versus Ursay for the Flyweight Championship. This was a really great card, and we're going to be taking a look back through the entirety of it, main card prelims and early prelims as well. Then taking a brief look at this week's fight card, Lewis versus Nascimento from St. Louis. So without any further ado, let's get into this week's episode. In the main event, we obviously had Alexander Pantoja taking on Steve Ursay for the men's flyweight belt. Really good opening round for both, landing in the opening few minutes, but Pantoja was able to get the fight to the ground, and Ursay ate a hard knee to the body when he tried to get up. And Pantoja was able to keep the fight on the ground for most of the time remaining in the first, looking for strikes and having really great control. But Ursay initiated a really great scramble off of a back take against the cage and was able to get back to his feet by the end of the round. In the second, Pantoja came out aggressive and landed a real good combination and closed the distance before getting in on a body lock and taking Ursay to the ground before briefly taking mount. But Ursay did a real good job of getting his guard back in play. And from half guard, he clamped onto Pantoja's left arm, switched the half guard to the left side, taking away Pantoja's base, and was able to sweep and get back to his feet. And Ursay had much more success on the feet in this round, especially later on in the round, landing some good elbows, his jab and straight right, and staggering Pantoja off of one of those elbows. Again, both having success throughout this round on the feet, but after landing a nice elbow in close and a left hook behind it, Ursay forced Pantoja to go for a shot, and he did complete the takedown, and he did go on to control Ursay for the remainder of the round and did nearly have his back, but it was a pretty tight round of score, I, I think. The fourth was a strong round for Ursay, landing good shots and keeping Pantoja moving back for most of the round, and it did seem like Pantoja might have been pacing himself going into the final round. And Ursay surprisingly went for a real early takedown in the fifth and completed it uh, really well, but Pantoja did a great job himself of wrestling up and taking back control of the grappling situation. But Ursay did well to get back to his feet, and when they were there, he landed another elbow, cutting Pantoja again on the right side of his face this time. But it was Ursay going to take down Pantoja and he does complete the takedown but Pantoja initiated a scramble and he ended up on top and Ursay tried to get Pantoja off of him but Pantoja just flowed really well always keeping a dominant position and rode out the rest of the fifth round on top and I think it would just be rounds two and three uh, that were going to be interesting to see how they were scored and in the end, Pantoja does get the unanimous decision victory, 48-47 on two of the scorecards and 49-46 on the other. Ursay only getting one round uh, in one of the judges' scorecards. I believe that was from David Torelli. Uh, and yeah, Sal Diamato and Fabio Alves both had it 48-47. Identical scorecards, rounds one, three, and five for Pantoja on both of those and rounds one, two, three, and five on David Torelli's scorecards. And in the co-main event, we had Jose Aldo taking on Jonathan Martinez. Aldo making his uh, octagon return after a two-year retirement. Both just having a bit of a feeling out process in the first round, each landing some good shots, but I do believe it was Aldo who landed the cleaner and harder punches in this round. 
the second Aldo landed a real nice combination to the body of Martinez, who in turn went to look for a single leg, pushed Aldo back up against the cage, and they kind of stalled out in a bit of a clinch battle there against the fence. But when they broke, Aldo really started getting the better of Martinez, landing some really nice combinations and stung Martinez with a hard right hand. Aldo mixing up his strikes really well, going to the body, the head, and the legs of Martinez. And it's a really impressive opening two rounds for Aldo. Good shots again landed by both in the third, but Martinez is getting outstruck by Aldo. And near the end of the round, Aldo hurt Martinez bad with a left hook that really wobbled him. Aldo followed up with some knees and punches, but not really looking for the finish it seemed, but he probably could have gotten it if he had kept the fight on the feet, but ended up securing a double leg and finished the fight on top, looking for strikes and to advance the position. And that's how it ends with Aldo on top and Jose Aldo takes home a unanimous decision victory 30-27 on all judges scorecards for a very impressive return against a very tough opponent and it will be interesting to see what his plans are from here going forward. Moving on to the rest of the main card we had Anthony Smith taking on Vitor Petrino. After Smith landed a few good leg kicks and jabs, Petrino closed the distance with a combination and looked to secure a double leg, but he left his neck very vulnerable and even after Smith had already started locking in the, the guillotine, Petrino didn't think to address the choke and instead decided to complete the takedown by picking Smith up and slamming him, probably thinking that the slam would allow him to pop his head out, but it just made the choke deeper and Petrino had to tap twice as the ref didn't see the first tap. And Anthony Smith wins this by submission in round number one. I don't know if this is going to be the start of a run for Anthony Smith at light heavyweight. I mean, everything kind of, well, not everything points against it, but I mean, you probably wouldn't bet your house on it at this point. But it'll be interesting to see uh, if he's able to revive uh, his run for a title at 205. And we'll see what happens. Moving on to the main card, we had Michel Pereira taking on Ihor Potieria. Pereira comes out and drops Potieria with a 1 2, mainly just doing all the damage off of the jab. And in typical Pereira fashion, he does a backflip to pass the guard into north south. Uh, there is some potential for a strike to a grounded opponent, um, but. When they worked back up to their feet though, Pereira locked in a guillotine and it was real tight and Potieria was forced to tap right before going out, but it was a bit too late and he does go out just after Pereira released the choke. And Pereira wins another one by submission, round one, guillotine, 53 seconds in. He did get a little bit lucky though as the commission did go back and have a look with the ref uh, about that very unorthodox backflip guard pass that he utilized um, to see if there was, you know, any cause for a strike to a grounded opponent. Nothing came back. They gave it the all clear. Uh, yeah, so Pereira does walk away with the win. And the fight to kick off the main card was Paul Craig and Kyle Bojalio. Strong first round for Pajalio, landing some good strikes and keeping the fight on the feet. Because Craig was attempting a few takedowns, but was not really close with any of them. And even when Craig tried to pull guard, it was very unsuccessful and Pajalio just stood back up. And Craig was throwing high kicks, but a lot of them were getting countered with a, with a nice right hand uh, by Pajalio. In the second, after both exchanged some good shots, it was Bohalio who hurt Craig with a straight left and a knee. And shortly after, Bohalio landed another left hand and a right hook that really hurt Craig. And he started pressuring Craig back to the fence and Bohalio landed a left hand that finished Craig, sent him crashing to the canvas and Mark Goddard steps in to call the fight. And Bohalio gets the second round KO over Paul Craig. It will be interesting to see what Craig's next move is, if he stays at middleweight or if he goes back up to light heavyweight. It will be interesting to see, but I don't think the plan at middleweight has quite worked out for him yet. 
Moving on to the prelims, we had Joe Anderson Brito taking on Jack Shore in a featured prelim. Hard leg kicks from Brito to start the round and really staying in Shore's face and just doing a lot of damage with his low kicks. And he really kept that attack going and also showed some real good takedown defense uh, up against the cage and in the open as well. In the second, Brito continued to attack the lead leg of Shore. And when Shore tried checking one of the kicks, it went shin to shin on the top and he got cut a little bit and it started to bleed pretty bad. And the announcers were very squeamish when they saw Shore's leg up close against the cage. And after that, the ref stepped in. He got the doctor to have a look at Shore's leg. The doctor was feeling around. He's sticking his finger in there. It was pretty gross. Um, and after a little bit, uh, the doctor decided to call the fight due to the injury, uh, which was a bit odd, I must say, uh, but he must have felt or seen something that could have turned in to a major problem for sure if he was allowed to continue. And, and Brito gets the TKO finish uh, in round number two. And we had Karolina Kovalkiewicz taking on Yasmin Lucindo. And it was all Lucindo in the first round. She landed a real nice left hand at the beginning of the round that damaged the eye of Kovalkiewicz. And Lucindo kept up the pressure for the rest of the round, getting a takedown right into mount and then finished the round in mount looking to strike or attack an armbar finish. In the second, both were looking good on the feet, but Lucindo was throwing strikes in combination, landing the better shots, and making Kovalkiewicz miss or countering her uh, off those misses. And in the third, Lucindo getting a real early takedown, and when Kovalkiewicz worked back to her feet, Lucindo hit her with a combination, causing another small cut, this time on the left side of Kovalkiewicz's face, uh, and controlled the remainder of the round, looking to take the back against the cage before getting another takedown, which again, Kovalkiewicz worked hard to get back to her feet, but it just wasn't enough, and Lucindo takes this in a unanimous decision, 30-27 on all judges scorecards. Moving down the prelims, we had Elvis Brenner taking on Mick the Beck Oral by, Oral by Oral by hurt Brenner in an opening exchange with the left hand and followed up with a takedown and Orobly on top landing some real good elbows and strikes. But Brenner went for the Omoplata which opened up a really nice grappling exchange with Brenner actually ending up on top but Orobly worked his way back to the feet, and when he did, he landed another left hand that hurt Brenner again and took him down late in the round, finishing on top. There was a hard front kick from Orobly in the second, followed up by a nice right hand, which rocked Brenner, and he followed up with a few more strikes before securing a takedown, and from there, it was a bit more of the control game from Orobly, moving into mount and showing real good top pressure. But Brenner did a good job getting back to his feet and Orlebi was on his way to easily win in the round, but off of a takedown against the cage, Brenner rolled through and ended up on top and slid right into mount and started looking briefly for a head and arm choke before abandoning it and landing a few strikes before the bell. Probably not enough to win him the round, but could be some good momentum going into the third. And the third was really interesting. Brenner came out looking for an early takedown after the success he had on the ground at the end of round two. Uh, in an exchange against the fence, Orobai got docked a point for a fence grab, which could be costly depending on how the rest of this round goes. Orobai did get the fight back to the ground and had Brenner in a crucifix, but Brenner walked up the cage and popped out the back door and looked to take the back of Orobai. But Orobly was able to disengage and right near the end of the round, Orobly dropped Brenner with a straight right off a of Brenner low kick, which could also be very impactful on the judges so late into the round. And Orobly does take this by unanimous decision victory, 29-27 on all three judges scorecards. Next up we had Joakim Silva taking on Drakkar Close. Close in control for the majority of the first round. Silva did land some good strikes, uh, but Close did get the better of it on the feet and, and had Silva more or less pinned up against the fence or had his back to the fence for most of the round. 
In the second, Close went for the early takedown, which was defended very well by Silva. They exchanged in a bit of a clinch battle on the cage, exchanging knees, and Silva hit Close with a good left hand, but Close closed the distance, again clinching up and both exchanging shots in the clinch until the end of the round. And in the third, it was again really entertaining. Both landing early, Silva locked up a guillotine with his back up against the fence. And you could tell by Close's reaction that it was pretty tight as he faceplants Silva right into the canvas. Silva, to his credit, did manage to keep hold of the head but didn't quite have the grip on the choke as much and was forced to abandon it. And when they worked back up to their feet, they did have a little bit of a clinch battle but breaking off of that, Silva dropped Close with a left hook off the cage, did try to follow it up with some shots on the ground, but Close was able to defend and get the fight back to his feet, where they exchanged a few more strikes before clinching up for the remainder of the round. And this was a unanimous decision victory for Drakkar Close, 29-28 on all three judges' scorecards. And on the featured prelim, featured early prelim, I should say, we had Mauricio Rufi taking on Jamie Malarkey. And Rufi ran through Malarkey pretty easily, landing hard, accurate shots and countering really well also. Hitting Malarkey with an impressive variety of shots and also had the very flash scissor takedown uh, before getting up and clipping Malarkey on the temple that really stumbled him. And Rufi followed that up with a straight right and a knee, which was the beginning of the end for Malarkey. And Rufi went in and followed up with a series of strikes against the cage, dropping Malarkey before he took a few more shots and the ref stepped in to call the fight. And this was a really impressive debut for Mauricio Rufi against, you know, always tough Jamie Malarkey, who maybe doesn't have quite the the record uh, to go by his name but he's a gamer he's tough and he'll never quit on himself so really impressive win tko round one for the newcomer mauricio rufi next up on the early prelims we had dion barbosa taking on ernesta cariscaita Barbosa landing to the body and the head in the first round before getting in tight on a body lock, stepping behind and taking Karaskaita down, and ended up with a real deep rear naked choke. Uh, but Karaskaita defended really well, uh, but Barbosa was able to maintain the, the back position and, and finish the round actually looking for an arm bar. The second round was a bit closer. Barbosa did come very near to landing a spinning elbow in the early part of the round uh, but did have a lot of success on the feet uh, near the end of the round as well with Barbosa through another spinning elbow that partially lands and Karaskaita used it to get into a clinch and take the fight to the ground uh, but found herself in trouble right away with Barbosa looking for a heel hook and then taken to the back of Karaskaita uh, who avoided all the danger and actually ended up the round on top uh, and it was quite a close round in my opinion could have gone either way uh, and in the third this was Karaskaita's proper round uh, great sprawls to defend the takedowns and she landed some real good shots as well on the feet uh, doing a good job of keeping the pressure and forcing bad shots from Barbosa who is clearly slowing down uh, in the final round and Karaskaita ended the round continuing with forward pressure in what was a really close fight and Barbosa ended up taking this one 29-28 on all three judges scorecards for the unanimous decision victory. Ismael Bonfim and Vince Pachel both having success on the feet in the first round. Uh, Pachel landing some good leg kicks and was able to avoid a lot of the early strikes from Bonfim. But Von Fiem did start to turn it up the pressure a little later on in the round, landing some good leg kicks of his own, uh, as well as some attacks to the head and the body as well. And the second Von Fiem started the round really strong, building on the success he built at the end of the first and carried that through the entire second, landing the cleaner shots with some beautiful body blows mixed in. And Pichel was staggered off a left hook to the body, followed by an overhand right that landed more with the forearm. Uh, Pichel was able to stay on his feet, um, but Bafim kept the pressure 
and it'll be real tough uh, for Pichel to see any kind of a comeback uh, in the third round. And it was not to come. It was just more success from Bonfim in the third, landing the harder and more visibly damning pu damaging punches to Pichel. Um, and Pichel was in trouble again with a left hand that followed by the knee and some other strikes against the cage. And by the end of this, in total, Bonfim had landed three times the strikes to the head than Pichel did with a, an 81 to 27 count. And Bonfim takes this easily 30-27 on all three judges' scorecards for the unanimous decision victory. And kicking off the whole card, we had Alessandro Costa taking on Kevin Borjas. Both throwing hard combinations in the opening round, but nothing of any real consequence lands. But near the end of the round, Costa hit Borjas with a jab that stumbled him. And Costa followed it up with a lead left hook off the temple, which really staggered Borjas. And then just missed with a follow-up knee that landed to the chest. But Borjas was with it enough to kind of shuck it off and uh, throw Costa down to the ground. Uh, and actually ended the round on his feet. And early into round two, Costa hit Borjas with a leg kick, and his was the beginning of the end for Borjas. And Costa kept on that attack of the lead leg, dropping Borjas several times, and followed up with some ground and pound before taking the mount and then moving to the back, before landing several more shots and, and eventually getting the stoppage in a really impressive victory. Round two, TKO for Alessandro Costa. So there were no fight of the night bonuses for UFC 301. Instead, the organization opted to go with the four performance of the night bonuses. The first one of those goes to Michelle Pereira for his absolute wrecking job that he did on Ijo Porteria. Second went to Kyle Bojalio for his KO over Paul Craig. Mauricio Rufi also took home 50000 for his KO slash TKO of Jamie Malarkey. And finally, Alessandro Costa takes home another 50 k bonus for his stoppage win over Kevin Borjas on the very first fight of the night. Taking a look now at this weekend's fight night card, Lewis versus Nascimento. Some other cards, or some other fights, I should say, that I'm looking forward to on this card. Uh, we've got Joaquin Buckley taking on Nursultan Ruzabov, Alonzo Menafield and Carlos Alberg. Uh, Mateusz Rebecki and Diego Fajera will be an interesting one as well. Um, one, Another one in the heavyweight division, Waldo Cortez Acosta taking on Robles de España. That should be very interesting as well. And on the prelims, we got Chase Hooper taking on Vyashlav Borishev, Terence McKenney versus Esteban Rebovics, and Charles Energy Johnson taking on Jack Hadley. That should be a very interesting fight as well. Looking forward to this card, and uh, hopefully it delivers. And that does it for another episode of The Fight Corner. Uh, I just really want to start off by thanking everyone for their support. Uh, I mean, we've gained qu quite a lot of subscribers uh, in the past month, a lot of views, some great comments, um, and I'm just really happy that people are enjoying this. If you have any feedback or suggestions on things that you would like to see more of or possibly less of, do let me know in the comments below. And hopefully I will be able to get around to start doing more of these types of videos, hopefully preview shows uh, before the cards actually start, doing a little bit of analysis on each fight, giving some predictions. I think that could be a lot of fun as well. Um, but again, any suggestions, any feedback at all, leave it in the comments below. And again, thank you so much for all the support. And until next time, peace.